Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Organic and Natural Digital Trade Week, the first of its kind in the region, where buyers and suppliers connect online. We are now on our seventh trade week, and the previous weeks have been phenomenally successful, engaging, and educational. Each trade week is purposed towards connecting buyers and suppliers online during this crucial time when most businesses are conducted remotely. A very warm welcome to all our viewers and speakers from across the world. This week, the focus is on the category I swear by personally, natural skincare and functional cosmetics. In this session, we will address the recent trends, the overall growth in the Middle East, and the way forward for this category. Today, we've gathered here to find new business opportunities from some of our eminent panelists, two major beauty players from the region, and three suppliers from across the world, who you can meet personally at the Organic and Natural Products Expo in Dubai this December. Before I proceed, I would like to play a video on the digital, on Organic and Natural Digital Trade Week. Two major beauty players. Global trade across the world has witnessed a paradigm shift. The demand for organic products has been booming across various categories. We at the Middle East Organic and Natural Products Expo 2020 are accelerating businesses through digitization, introducing the Organic and Natural Digital Trade Week, a virtual event dedicated to connecting world-class organic product suppliers to the relevant VIP buyers in the Middle East. Five months of online trade activities focusing on specific product segments ranging from superfoods to functional cosmetics. Week-long focused campaigns aimed at connecting overseas suppliers with local and regional buyers to open new trade and business opportunities. Each trade week includes live sessions with new product introductions and interactive product presentations, individual online meetings function, instant quotes from suppliers through the Middle East's only dedicated online wholesale marketplace for organic and natural products, panel discussion on demand and new opportunities from trade buyers, all the elements of an expo available digitally. We make sure you do business 365 days of the year from the comfort of your home, a platform to trade online before we all gather for the Grand Expo from 15th to 17th December in Dubai. Place for organic and natural products, panel discussion on demand and new opportunities from trade buyers. All the elements of an expo available digitally. We make sure you do business 300. Now let me introduce our panelists to you. First we have Lina Alabas. Founder and CEO of the Organic Glow Beauty Lounge, UAE's first ever premium, organic, and vegan salon. After 13 years of working in the corporate world, Emirati Lina Al Abbas decided it was time to follow her passion of living a green lifestyle whilst mixing it with her appreciation for beauty. Lina made it her mission to educate people about using toxic free, eco friendly, and cruelty free products, which is how the Organic Glow Beauty Lounge was launched. Lina carefully source product, sources products from reliable brands which are natural and follow strict environmental policies and fully disclose their ingredients and organic certifications. Our next speaker is Mukta Tewani Pure, the co-founder of Miss Palatable, Middle East's biggest e-commerce platform for clean beauty. As a discerning young skincare consumer, Mukta realized early on the gap in the GCC cosmetics and skincare brand market. Having found niche brands in the natural beauty from different countries, and Mukta teamed up with her husband and co-founded MissPalatable.com, an online retail store offering natural premium beauty brands sourced from all over the globe. The portal is a curation of natural, clean, but effective beauty products with powerful natural ingredients. There is literally everything you could possibly want on Miss Pal Palatable to turn your beauty routine green. Moving on to our exhibitors for today. Meet Anna Kozeko, the export manager for OnlyBioLife.com from Poland, Warsaw. OnlyBioLife, OnlyBio.life, excuse me, specializes in the production of natural and eco-friendly body and hair care products for adults and children, also babies. They're certified by EcoCert and vegan associations across the world. Only bioproducts are free of components which are dangerous for health and the environment. From sourcing, 
ingredients to manufacturing all the way to packaging. They are 100% environmentally friendly. At onlybio.life, they believe in together we care about maintaining our standards at every stage of production, and we choose eco lifestyles to have a real impact on the world of the future. Our second exhibitor for today is Ms. Amina Mushati, the founder of By the Bee. Amina's brand in 2015 with the idea of bringing together culture and beauty through a wide range of natural care for face, body, and hair with a fresh bulb of Arabic organic dates. Dates do not contain toxic ingredients prohibited in cosmetic formulations, and they have a rich mineral composition of sugar, calcium, potassium, and phosphorus. Wow, what an interesting concept. Looking forward to hearing about your product. And our final exhibitor for today is Ms. Amina Mango. She's the founder and CEO of Amina's Natural Skin Care, an exclusively certified organic skincare brand and factory in Jordan and the MENA region. It all began as a solution to move away from harmful chemicals and to soothe her children's sensitive skin. She wanted to support and empower women through employment and training, which led to the establishment of Amina's Natural Skin Care, certified by Soil Association and Cosmos. Amina is passionate about nature and olive trees. She values education and supporting persons with disabilities in Jordan and serves on the Board of Governors at the International Community School and the Al Hussein Society. I welcome you all to today's session. Thank you. Thank you, Mani. Welcome. I would now like to invite Mukta to open today's session with her keynote. Mukta, the floor is all yours. Sure. I'll just share the. Okay. Hi. My name is Mukta Tiwani Purin, and I founded Miss Palatable about three years ago. So Miss Palatable is your one-stop destination of curated, non-toxic and cruelty-free beauty brands. We've sourced them from all over the world and we've made them accessible and available within the UAE. We aim to offer more options and choices for the consumers of the region. And it, we've, op we've actually opened up the um, conversation over here as well in terms of um, cruelty-free and non-toxic. So in terms of growth in the global and natural organic beauty segment, we, I really, we really feel that the segment is growing and It's growing and um, one of the main reasons why I do think it's growing is because there's just an increase in awareness. Um, people are looking for more transparency in terms of ingredients. There's a lot of information out on, on the internet and you know, people are asking questions, what's, you know, what's in my products? And um, the second reason I think you know, we're seeing a lot of growth here is that we're witnessing more R&D being pushed into this segment. I mean, you know, as soon as you see your big giants like Sephora, L'Oreal, Shiseido starting to pump in money into this segment, you know that, you know, it, there's growth in it. And the third reason I am, um, I see, you know, a lot of growth in the um, beauty segment is that, you know, especially after COVID, there's a lot of conversation now in terms of sustainability and eco-friendly, and especially when it comes out of packaging in, in beauty products. So, um, you know, brands, I can, you can start seeing that brands are also now focusing on creating recyclable, eco-friendly packaging, and even, you know, packaging manufacturers are starting to um, push a bit more R&D in this side of um, the business as well. Now within the Middle East, I, from in the three years I've been in this business, um, I've definitely seen a huge increase in growth. Uh, when we first, when I first started Miss Palatable, you know, I, you, I wasn't really hearing a lot about it, but today, you know, um, I see a lot more conversation happening within the space as well. I mean, and in the UAE as well, you know, you, you're looking at a growth of $247 per capita, you know, over here, and that's going to be growing 
two to about 294. The second um, thing that I'm actually seeing is that, you know, you've got your millennials and generation Z who are extremely socially conscious as well. And they're one of the driving forces of this segment. You know, um, it's now perceived as being cool to care um, within their age group. And additionally, I kind of also see that, you know, in terms of personal health, people are being a lot more conscious. You know, there is healthy, clean eating. And that's starting to also trickle down into the personal care and beauty space because, you, you know, it's become part of a lifestyle. And finally, I see, you know, an increase in number of homegrown beauty brands, you know, beauty brands that are made in the UAE cropping up recently. You know, you've got brands such as Shippa, by Nusu, Herbal Essence, helping make the space a bit more mainstream. And, you know, I do see even more brands starting to come up, especially in the Middle East. Finally, um, in terms of my view, in terms of our website, there are three um, interesting perceptions that I've seen um, in terms of um, where the demand is within the region. So one of the first places that I've seen incredible growth is in hair care, vegan and plant-based hair care. And one of um, our best sellers is actually Buklem, which is a range of curl care products that uses pure natural actives and is plant-based and vegan as well. The second side of it um, is I'm seeing a lot of color cosmetics um, demand increasing. So within the space, you know, we've always had skincare, but recently I've seen a huge demand coming in, especially for base makeup. So in terms of foundation and concealers, and one of the brands that we um, hold is Hint Beauty, and um, I, the concealers are um, one of our best sellers as well. Third is um, you, in the Middle East, <laughs> you need sun care. So this is this is all year round. Sun care is one of our most popular categories um, in terms of SPF. And um, our most popular brand is Soleil Toujours because, you know, especially for our tanner skin tones, you don't get this white cast. And it's also a mineral sunscreen with um, high levels of zinc oxide. I believe our sun, the sunscreen has about 17.6% of zinc oxide in it. And and yeah, Ben, where can you find us online? You can find us on misspalatable.com, which is our website. We, we definitely have a lot more on our page in terms of brands and um, products, as well as um, we're constantly putting up content on our Instagram page. You can find us at misspalatable underscore. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you a video, just a small little video about our brand as well. interesting and insightful Mukta. Thank you so much for that. I now welcome Lena to introduce herself and her company. Thanks Manaka. Thank you for inviting me um, to this interesting topic and webinar. I'll just share my screen. Is it okay? Can you see it? Yes. All right, fine. So I'll be talking about my salon, um, the Organic Glow Beauty Lounge, which is the UAE's first organic and vegan salon. Um, I launched uh, the Organic Glow in 2010 with a very big mission and not just to, to have a salon, but to actually um, create awareness amongst women about the dangers of using harsh chemicals on themselves. 
Um, it came because I was having my own health issues whenever I used to visit salons in, in Dubai. And every time I got my hair color or nails, I would just, you know, end up having um, severe rashes and, um, and just health issues. And when I made the connection and did my research and uh, started looking for a salon that offered healthier options and safer treatments, mm-hmm. I didn't find anything. So that really pushed me to uh, launch my own salon. And that's what we exactly do. We offer uh, safer uh, alternatives to, to you know, the, the, the regular uh, treatments that are offered in salons. Our client base <laughs> is is um, we get lots of pregnant women. We get lots of uh, cancer patients, recovering patients, uh, uh, clients with sensitive skins. We get uh, lots of vegans. Uh, it's, it's 100% vegan. I'm vegan as well, so it had to be vegan. Uh, green beauty lovers, eco-friendly um, uh, warriors, and basically people just wanting uh, non-toxic uh, treatments. As mentioned, uh, we offer uh, similar treatments and services as other salons, but with the specialty that they are toxic free, they are safer safer options. So for example, um, you know, we have uh, toxic free nail care, organic hair care, we have organic color and um, ammonia free color as well. We have organic hair removal. And we also blend um, our in house uh, body scrubs and hair oils and massage oils and uh, fruit facials. So we blend these in-house using uh, premium organic products, which I source locally. Now, obviously other salons are offering um, some organic treatments or selling some organic products, but I, I have always taken a, a complete uh, 360 uh, degree um, just basically uh, offering of of green beauty in a salon. So um, just like we offer uh, treatments which are uh, green and organic and natural, the whole concept of the salon is is actually green. So for example, our interiors are eco-friendly. We follow a green policy, we recycle, we care about energy consumption. We use uh, biodegradable towels. We, uh, we use eco-friendly cleaning products. Um, we only use filtered water. So there's no need to use plastic bottles and plastic cups to give to clients. So it's a complete uh, green beauty offering um, from the moment you step in to the treatments you, you, um, you have at the salon. So in addition uh, to being organic and uh, toxic free, we are cruelty free and vegan. So, you know, this is great news also for vegans who often have difficulties um, uh, trusting other salons and asking, you know, if if this is 100% plant-based, et cetera. And sometimes the staff are not really informed about it and, and they could say yes, but actually, you know, the products are not. So in, in my salon, everything is um, uh, vegan and cruelty free. So uh, I, I, I make sure to source products that are never tested on animals. And as, uh, as Mukta said, also have a, a, a green, um, basically just, just a, an eco-friendly uh, concept behind the products. They recycle, they have you know, these programs in place. Uh, some of the... the, the the logos that I, I trust and work with are the vegan, the not tested on animals, organic, um, the cruelty free. I've recently started working with the 360 BioCert organic uh, certification for our hair products and fair trade whenever, uh, wherever it is available. So I follow a very strict criteria when I select my products and I always test everything on myself first before I offer them um, uh, in, in the salon. So yeah, so we we celebrated 10 years um, last uh, end of last year, and um, it has been an interesting journey um, from not having many um, places and even the products were sometimes very hard to 
to get in, in the region. Um, so I used to get lots of things from abroad, but, but now luckily we have reached a point where there are so many um, products that you can find locally through suppliers. And, and yeah, it, it's, it's, it's becoming much, much easier because it's becoming more common now. People are demanding for it. And I see with my clients, uh, they are more um, aware, they're more savvy, they know what they want. They are very picky about the ingredients uh, in, in the products. So um, end of this year, we're, go we're going to be 11. And green beauty is definitely here to stay. And it is going to be really the norm, the norm, hopefully, for everyone uh, to follow and, and, and acquire. So the next uh, phase of my salon is, is the franchising um, of it. I get lots of um, offers and requests to, uh, to you know, replicate the, the concept. And so this is something that I will be, uh, I am currently working on. It is in the works. And yeah, hopefully, hopefully it will be, uh, it will happen very soon. And to get um, in touch with me, this is my email info at Organic Glow UAE. We also have a website, uh, www.organicglowuae.com. And we're on social media as well, uh, at Organic Glow UAE. Thank you. Thank you, Lena, and congratulations for 10 years going Thank on to 11. And this does show a clear demand, rising demand for vegan, organic, cruelty-free beauty treatments as a whole. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for that. I now invite our international suppliers to introduce their companies and products. And we'll be starting with Ms. Amina Bushati. Okay. <laughs> uh... So I will turn my, um... hi everybody, you listen to me, you hear me? Yes. It, I will just uh, turn my, uh, my, uh, my screen. Yes. So uh, the first, I will uh, uh, show you the video, okay? And then I will. Uh... You see you my screen? Make... Yeah, you can make it full screen. So I should. I will show, uh, show you my. Uh... At the first, I would like to to thank you, everybody in the organic and natural all the teams, uh, for this opportunity to uh, to to talk about me and uh, my, my new cosmetic brand. Thank you, everyone. And uh, at the first, I will show you the video and then I will give you more details about it, okay? Presentation. Uh, it's okay for you. You see my presentation? No, I'm seeing your video still. Maybe you can stop sharing and start sharing again. Yeah. 
So uh, I would like to talk to you about uh, the By Davi Cosmetics brand and uh, the, the idea how, uh, how, uh, how I start this project. So at the first, I would like to uh, talk to you about, uh, well, when I come at my first time in the uh, United Arab Emirates from France, and uh, you know, it's uh, very warm. The environment is really very warm. So I have uh, a dry skin and uh, I have uh, like scars, you know, when, uh, when you the skin do the scars. I don't know perhaps because it's very warm and because uh, uh, the, the water, so, uh, so I take uh, one datus, you see the datus? And uh, I start to, to like to do a massage like scrub by, by the datus in, in my face. You can do the experience by yourself. And uh, after two or three days, when I do this procedure and repeat it more many times, I, uh, in my surprise, I find that my skin, uh, it, it, it was be uh, soft. It was soft, and uh, these scars they are removed. So uh, I have the curiosity to know what sh what exists in the data to do, like uh, to to put to to have these uh, to uh, to uh, to bring this uh, softness for the skin. So uh, so we do the analysis, the scientific analysis about data to know what exists in the to bring what uh, to bring. Um, the softness in the skin. So we have four uh, specialty ingredients, the sugar, the calcium, the phosphorus, and the potassium. The principal element is the calcium because uh, the calcium and phosphorus, they give, ener uh, they give uh, produce energy, like energy for the cells. And uh, the potassium with calcium, they bring, the, they keep the, um, the elasticity of the hair. So when, when we have this analysis and the data was be not toxic and we can do a cosmetic formulation, so I start the project. Uh, so uh, here uh, we started the project to uh, make a new cosmetic brand with dates. All products they are uh, with the main elements is dates. And uh, the project has two uh, of it. The objective is not just to add more more products in the in the in the cosmetic market. You know, it's not this uh, really the objective. The objective is to open, uh, to open, uh, like um, to use dates in cosmetic, because this anger, this uh, fruit is very uh, is very culture in the in the Middle East, and in Arabic country, and it's very uh, rich with mineral oil, mineral uh, comp uh, mineral <laughs> composition. I'm sorry for my bad English, so I try to, to be more... Uh, Don't worry at all, we're understanding you very clearly. Don't worry. Good. So, uh, so the project, it started, and uh, the, name of the, the, the name of the brand is Baydavi. It's composed by two words. Uh, Bayda is an Arabic word, means uh, dessert, and V is a French word, it means life, because dates, they, are, uh, they assure the life in desserts for, for, a, long des for, for a long time. And uh, so our objective in this brand is to, to use the finest organic data in the, in the cosmetic uh, products and without uh, any toxic, uh, toxic uh, ingredient, uh, even PEG, uh, PPG, because perhaps for even in the organic, uh, even in the organic uh, products, perhaps you find it uh, PEG and PPG. They are, uh, they are uh, a chemical ingredient and they are not... Uh, good for the for, for the skin and for the pH of the skin. So uh, by Davi is uh, a natural skincare, natural uh, uh, natural product uh, for uh, hair care, skin care and uh, body care. So uh, these the idea about the project is and uh, how how we, uh, when we start though so then uh, we have three categories okay that uh, we do. The, f the first is the face range. So we, we do um, a cream to, uh, for moisturizing because they, so they are very rich in glucose. Glucose, you know, like sugar, like honey. And uh, they, they are very, they bring very uh, much hydration for the skin. And uh, when we use these products, uh, um, 
the data uh, uh, extract can reduce the wrinkles, mm -hmm. like uh, the oil of, uh, of kernel of dates. Okay? So, uh, so we, pre we prepare two products for, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for, for, for face, for skin care, for the day and for the night, okay? And uh, these two products, they, they are tested by use tests. They are, they, her, um, so we use like use test with dermatological uh, control, you see, dermatological uh, um, uses, uses test. I don't know if you know what, is, what I say, uses test. So yeah. we try with 20 person to, to, to try the, the products and to, uh, to know, to, to, to know what exists in the, uh, if the products they are good or not, you see. Um, that's the first range. The second is hair range, okay. With the, this uh, range, so we prepare uh, two products, especially one uh, for, for uh, like a gentle daily shampoo. So we can use it every day with his cream, without sulfate, without silicone, without any uh, irritating ingredient. And the second is the anti uh, anti fall. Anti fall um, um, hair with uh, uh, weight proteins, especially. And uh, the second, uh, the third range is body range. So, uh, Baydavi has a culture uh, axe. So, we have cosmetic axe and we have a culture axe too. So, I developed these two uh, products. Uh, the first is a shower cream with dates and uh, milk protein. You know, there is uh, a very special dish in the Arabic country and the Middle East, especially dates with milk that uh, we eat every day. So the idea is from there to prepare body care with, uh, mil with the dates and protein milk. And the second is the uh, scrub, a scrub with dates and uh, the kernel of dates. Um, so uh, like this, I show you. And uh, the product is, is with, uh, we smell here, natural perfume of dates. So we prepare in our natural perfume of dates. And this, for example, this it is, it is, it is scrub. It's very, it's very nice. And uh, I'll show you on face. For, you can use it even in the face because uh, these product is, we added an active, a natural active with moisturizing natural activity moisturizing. So we, we have another product is for face, but this is for the body, but it, even it uses it in the face, okay? And this, uh, sorry, this, like what I say here, is uh, uh, with natural data extract of data and milk protein. And uh, this product, if, if, for, for, for all the products, I use it natural perfume of dates. Voilà. So here we have uh, the shampoo. It's very uh, interesting. The, all my shampoos, for example, they are uh, used in the keratin when you have uh, the keratin treatment or Brazilian treatment or protein treatment in, in, in your hair. So we can use it without any problem because there is no sulfate, no silicone, any, ticks, any uh, irritating ingredient. I use it by myself when uh, every day, for example. And the second is with the, with the you know, in the cosmetic, the sulfate, uh, the silicon or the dimeticon, they are uh, chemical ingredient. The alternative of silicon and dimeticon in the natural cosmetic is, is the weight protein. The weight protein, they are the alternative of silicon. It, it is the natural silicon, you know, natural silicon is the weight protein. So all my products that, uh, for the hair, they are rich by the weight protein because we don't need, we don't put the, the silicone or any derivative of them. So they can use it for uh, when you do treatment, uh, keratin treatment or something else, so you can use it without any problem with, with, with hair cream, of course. It, it uh, advises to use shampoo and hair cream to, to, to bring more softness and to bring more, more uh, nourishing in the hair. So uh, these, this is my, uh, my brand, so uh, this is my contact. We have, uh, we have, we have of course, um, website by david.com. 
we have also a Shen YouTube, a Shen uh, YouTube channel. That's right. I do it from France to, to English translations. Uh, YouTube channel. So uh, this is by Davi Cosmetics. Uh, this is our line to uh, for the project use data and uh, use this this benefit of data in cosmetic for the skincare for the hair care for uh, because they are very rich in calcium and phosphorus in uh, these four minerals that I really very interesting in the in the skin in the cosmetics that's all thank you so much thank you Amina thank you for you thank you for you We've learned a lot about dates and the composition today. <laughs> now uh, I invite Anna to present her products. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, it is Anna and I am connecting from Poland. Uh, and it's lovely weather here outside. We have around 30 degrees and it is really sunny weather. So oh, yeah, today I would like to present uh, you our company and our main um, main philosophy of our company. And I will start with uh, sharing my screen with uh, really short presentation and with short video. Uh, and you will share computer sound. You will see it by yourself. Okay, I hope you can see my screen and I will start presenting right now. Um, and it should be okay. So I would like to start, as I said, I, I work as an export manager for OnlyBio.life and we as a company from Poland, we are the largest producer of certified natural cosmetics products for uh, adults, for children. Uh, it is body care and facial care. And also we are producing uh, natural um, cleaning products for cleaning the house. Today I would like to uh, present you our product portfolio, but let me start from the very beginning, from really essential, from really important uh, thing that uh, it is our responsibility. Because in our team, uh, we are, we are responsible for the nature and we do care about the nature. So we uh, maintain our standards in each step of our production process. And also we yeah. choose eco lifestyle as, uh, as workers of our company, we choose eco lifestyle uh, as we do believe that, the, is that this has and a real impact to the world and to our future. So let me show you our uh, short film. It is in Polish, but with English subtitles, so you can... Koło, w sensie materialnym i symbolicznym, towarzyszy nam wszędzie i od zawsze. Jego koniec jest zarazem początkiem. Wyraża między innymi równowagę, doskonałość oraz naturę z jej cyklicznym zamieraniem i odradzaniem się. Wiemy coś o tym, bo nasze kosmetyki powstają w taki sposób. Wszystko zaczyna się na polu jaskrawo-żółtego rzepaku. Wspaniałej rośliny będącej surowcem bardzo zdrowego oleju. Ale co zrobić z pozostałościami po jego produkcji? Tu wkracza technologia biorafinacji, czyli naturalnego przetwarzania w nową formę. Dzięki procesowi fermentacji przy użyciu specjalnych mikroorganizmów Powstaje substancja, która doskonale myje i czyści. Jest zdrowa, nietoksyczna, antyseptyczna, antyrakowa i biodegradowalna. To właśnie z niej powstają nasze kosmetyki. A pozostałości po procesie biorafinacji to ulubiony przysmak krów, które produkują potem nawóz, który pomaga rosnąć wspaniałemu i jaskrawo-żółtemu, tak, tak, już wiecie, rzepakowi. Tym samym cykl się zamyka. Jesteśmy dumni, że nasze produkty powstają w zgodzie z naturą. Only bio. Naturalna siła z rzepaku. So, so I hope you enjoy it. As it was said, it is natural, uh, it is natural power of rapeseed, because uh, in Poland we have a lot of rapeseed uh, fields. So we have really a lot of uh, rapeseed um, oil and rapeseed cake, and we decided to use it in our production line. So we patented uh, our own technology. 
it is uh, it is yeah uh, biosurfactin and uh, levan. It is made from uh, rapeseed cake, and it is our special technology that has no any analogs in the world really and we are really proud of it and uh, also we have a team of uh, almost 30 scientists who are uh, working in our r d department and always trying to improve our technology uh yeah uh, what i would like to say that our products are really safe they are natural uh, they uh, have uh, certificates they are certified by ecocert and vegan and also in each uh, our line we have hypoallergenic version which has no any fragrances at uh, the composition because uh, that is something that is fragrances are uh, the ingredients that uh, can cause the allergy reactions so we have hypoallergenic version and for this uh, product we have also asthma allergy denmark certificate uh, and of course these products are without any sls packs and uh, gmos or any other uh, any other dyes uh, as a quick view on our portfolio uh, we have in our product line, we have uh, products for uh, adults and in this uh, line we have uh, facial cosmetics products, body care, hair care, hand care and any other. Uh, also, we are open for private labeling, so if you are interested, you can ask me directly because uh, we have a lot of uh, products and as I said before, our R&D department are always uh, working on the new uh, technologies and on the new recipes. Uh, the second line, it is something for baby. It is baby care products for, for body and hair. We have here body washes, shampoos, uh, body lotions, and so on. Um, and of course, household cleaners, this is a range of non-toxic, biodegradable, and of course certified by EcoCert, so it is Cosmos Natural Detergent Certificate. Uh, for, for cleaning products for house, it is something like cleaning, uh, kitchen cleaner, bathroom cleaner, uh, dishwashing liquids, and so on and so forth. Uh, all of these products are already launched to the uh, arabianorganics.com, so you can easily check, uh, check the, our portfolio and find the product for you and find the product you are interested in. Uh, and what I would like to add that uh, the ingredient list of all of our products are made from uh, natural ingredients and uh, at least 99% of uh, all of our composition of our recipe is uh, natural origin. And what I would like to say, we are um, now we are work, we are looking for new distributors for our products in your region, because we think that Middle East region is very attractive. So uh, I would like to see you during the exhibitions and see you uh, on, in December. And it's all from my side. And I will stop sharing. Thank you very much, Anna. And we look forward to seeing you at the exhibition as well. <laughs> now we move on to Miss Amina Mango. And uh, I will share a video, an introductory video on her company. The story of Amina's natural skincare products is simple. It's the story of my children. As the saying goes, necessity is the mother of all inventions. Well, I was a mother with a necessity. Chapter one of my story started in the year 2000, when my daughter Maryam was three. She began exhibiting signs of dry skin and eczema. At the same time, I became aware of all the dangerous chemicals found in skincare products. 
and particularly in those for children. I was horrified and began to search for natural products. Unable to find any truly natural products that were pleasant to use, I came across traditional brands of soap in particular that were natural but unfortunately were not pleasant to use or consistent in quality. I have always been interested in herbs and natural healing. Living on an olive farm in Majdal, on the outskirts of Jarash, and producing my own olive oil gave me the initial idea of making my own soap. I researched and tried out many recipes until I finally found the recipe that was mild, moisturizing, and suitable for sensitive skin. From then on, I began producing all the products that my daughter needed for cleansing, moisturizing, and hydrating, always using olive oil as a base and combining it with herbs and natural oils. Chapter 2 of my story began with my son Jibril, who was born in 2004. He suffered from the age of six months with severe eczema and was diagnosed with life-threatening food allergies that caused his severe eczema. He suffered terribly. I became obsessed with soothing and healing his skin in a natural way. For him, I developed a line of hydrating oils and soothing aloe vera cream to help heal and restore his skin to its natural balance. These products were so successful in treating his skin that you could no longer see that he was an eczema sufferer. My products became very popular with family members and friends. They were evidently very effective and helped many adults and children. I knew that I had a duty to produce them, to help all those who may find themselves in a similar situation as me, to offer a natural range of products that are safe, effective and suitable for sensitive skin. Chapter 3 was moving forward in building my workshop, importing and using only organic certified oils and ingredients, and having our facility and production process, as well as products approved by EU, ISO and GMP standards of certification. We worked tirelessly for several years at our factory towards preparing for organic inspection. In 2016, we obtained our organic certification with the Soil Association Cosmos European Organic Standard. This is one of the hardest organic standards to obtain, and we are extremely proud to be the first in Jordan and in the region to have this organic certification for our factory, our ingredients, and our finished products. To have the organic certificate and standard means that all our ingredients are certified organic, that our manufacturing process and packaging are approved as in line with organic standards, and that all our claims are verified. For us, this means a lot. It means that all our work is to the highest standard possible. To our customers, organic certification means that our products are guaranteed free from harmful chemicals, such as parabens, phthalates, surfactants, mineral oils, and fragrance. I am very happy to confirm that we have had all our products tested independently in labs in the UK to actually sustain the claims of suitable for newborns, suitable for sensitive skin, and pediatrician and dermatologically approved. Today, Amina's Natural Skin Care offers a range of skincare products for the whole family from day one until mature skin. We are passionate about what we do and always ensure that we provide the finest certified skincare products that really work and above all are healthy and safe. Every product has a story of why it was needed and thus made. A simple, fuss-free daily routine for every skin type, utilizing only the finest organic ingredients with Jordanian certified olive oil and Dead Sea salts. Everything we did and will do is and always will be true to our slogan, inspired by and created for my children. Um, thank you for sharing that. I'm not sure, I, I saw it a bit jumbled and very fast. I, I don't know if you all got to see it. Uh, I hope you got to see it better than I did because I uh, there was something wrong with the speed, I think. Um, yeah, it was okay, <laughs> that's good. Uh, so I think the video says it all. Uh, we're now at the phase, I mean, the, 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 the product and the story started for my children and now, uh, it's um, moving uh, forward because as we all know, the interest in organic and safe products is so great. And uh, being a mother who's uh, done this for her children, I think gives it even more of a uh, interest and credibility because if it's, if it's you know, it adds to the value. And uh, I'm uh, very proud to be able to do this and to be uh, the first in Jordan and the MENA region to have organic certification. It's uh, indeed something that uh, very, I feel very proud to have achieved that. 
and uh, we are um, we are now a, a, a brand that has a full range of skin and uh, and face uh, products. So it's no, not only for children. Uh, I'm not sure. Can you hear me? Because I, it's cutting. Yeah, we can hear you, but your image is a little frozen. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I'm not sure how far, how much you heard. So our our brand is uh, now encompasses a variety of skin uh, everyday skincare products. So you have some. Uh, our initial uh, hero product, which is the soap, uh, based on olive oil, uh, but not only olive oil, and uh, to shower oils and uh, facial creams and, uh, uh, and Dead Sea products. Our uh, products incorporate using, uh, I mean, we, I use the my uh, products, mainly olive oil, Jordanian certified organic olive oil, cold pressed extra virgin olive oil, as well as Dead Sea salt and uh, uh, aloe vera that I harvest freshly for every batch. So it's not dehydrated aloe vera, it's aloe vera that is harvested and added into the cream every uh, time we produce a batch of aloe vera cream, which makes it a very effective and uh, potent uh, uh, soother for sensitive skin. And uh, we are very excited because we are at the phase now of also uh, uh, enlarging our facility and uh, so that we can soon become a custom built Per, you know, eco-friendly uh, factory uh, that can be, uh, you know, something very impressive for the region because we are we are the first to have any organic certification as well as ISO and GMP. We're also included in uh, uh, FC. We have FC certification, so we are uh, we are part of the European uh, Federation for Cosmetic Ingredients. We can also uh, we produce ingredients for the cosmetic industry based on some of our herbs and oils. And um, this is where we are now. It started for my daughter when she's three and now she's 23. So it's been a journey, but it's been a very interesting journey. And I'm happy to share it with you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. <laughs> thank you so much, Amina. And thank you all of our panelists for introducing us to some amazing products uh, from across the globe. Uh, all of the products are available for inquiry on arabianorganics.com and you can also see it below your live stream box if you scroll down. Let's now begin our panel discussion with some intriguing questions. So uh, all of you can unmute if you'd like. Uh, before divulging into the Middle Eastern landscape, let's start with global trends. I want to hear your views on global trends. And we'll start with Anna, since she's the only one who is not from the region. Um, global market for national organic skincare and functional cosmetic sector, what has been the growth according to you? Yeah, I think uh, as I see in Europe, for example, this is real uh, the trend that natural and organic cosmetics are now, uh, you, you know, are more and more, uh, more and more people want to have uh, cosmetics really organic. And we have more and more vegan, for example, that are really looking for uh, for some products available and suitable for them. It is very, very important for them. And uh, more and more uh, companies right now in Europe, for example, produce such products, but not all of them are certified. And it is, it is very uh, essential to pay attention on certifying because um, customers are not always... Um, paying their attention on the percentage of natural ingredients. For example, some producers have 99% and some producers have 94% of natural ingredients. And for final customers, it doesn't make any sense, but it is actually because uh, in this 6% or 5% we, we can have uh, some chemical ingredients that is not suitable for prone skin or for sensitive skin. So I think the uh, main, um, the main uh, now strengths of uh, 
of really natural producer is to having certificates that is really uh, on top right now. And it is something that we see on European market of natural uh, product products uh, producers. That I would That's like. an interesting point about certification. Mukta, what's your view on certification? I think it's really important, um, especially when it comes down to um, brands. For example, like in the US, you know, a lot of ingredients are not registered with the FDA, for example. Whereas, you know, with Europe, a lot of the ingredients are banned. So when it comes down to, you know, buying, um, reaching out to brands and speaking to brands from Europe, it's a little more easier because I know that, you know, there are already um, ingredients that are banned within the region. But when it comes down to the US, things get a little bit tricky because, you know, like I said, in terms of the FDA, and this is something that's really in conversation over there, a lot of ingredients that are banned in Europe are not banned in the US. So when it comes down to, especially with American brands and the ones that I speak to as well, I do try and get, um, ask them, you know, if they have any certifications, for example, if they have an EcoCert, are they cruelty free? Do they have the Leaping Bunny certification? If, you, if they are vegan, do they have any form of vegan certification? And, you know, a lot of transparency I do request from them because when it comes down to the UAE as well, you have to register beauty brands with Dubai municipality. And, you know, and they do ask a lot of questions, which is a good thing when it comes down to regulations in the region. But um, that's also something that, you know, not every, every store does over here. So that's also something to um, look at. Coming to the Middle East, uh, you know, how it's interesting how the category has caught on, especially post COVID-19. And the demand for all things organic and natural has witnessed so much growth. So Lena, what is the market for organic and natural skincare and functional cosmetics in the Middle East? Uh, there's definitely more demand for it now. Um, you know, as mentioned earlier, uh, clients uh, are becoming very picky when it comes to the products uh, they're using and their spending power you could see is going towards these specific uh, clean beauty products um, that also are ethical products. So just not having, a, you know, not just having a toxic free product, but but they want to know, is it ethical? You know, is it uh, treating the uh, uh, the labor laborers who produce these products? Are is, is this company ethical? Is it being tested on animals? Uh, this is a big thing as well. And you've got also, you know, the uh, the celebrities endorsing also these products and supporting, you know, the green uh, beauty movement. So there has been a big push uh, regarding that. Um, the, uh, you know, the, the ladies, for example, they are aware of their um, skin issues, their sensitivities. So even things like, you know, if they're wheat intolerant, you know, if they're gluten uh, uh, intolerant, they, they demand products that have no wheat in them. So it's, it really is going very extremely specific. And these are things that we never really used to worry too much about. But now it, it is kind of like expected and you're always pushed to providing, you know, something um, beyond expectations. And uh, yeah, so, so definitely the demand is becoming very, very refined. Um, yeah. There is, there is a very specific uh, demand for these products now. Yeah, and also it was interesting how Mukta uh, pointed out about Gen Z and millennials. And uh, Gen Z and millennials are the ones who do a lot of research because they're born in the age of technology. So that is incredibly important for natural and organic products in the beauty segment. And uh, Ms. Amina, and uh, would you have anything to add about the Middle Eastern sector from a producer's perspective? Um, from a producer's perspective, it's a very uh, new market, new. <laughs> it's, uh, there, there's very few organic producers and there are lots who claim to be natural and uh, they use natural ingredients combined with a lot of chemical ingredients or for example in in our country, you know, because we have the Dead Sea and you have Dead Sea salts and Dead Sea mud. So, 
because of uh, the consumers not being very aware of the dangers of uh, chemicals, uh, or they might see, you know, branded products saying natural dead sea salts, and they'd assume the whole product is natural. That's uh, that's uh, where we are at the moment. So you have uh, so-called natural products, uh, but because, as everybody I think is aware, the the natural. Um, so, you know, the, the, the world of natural and organic uh, skincare, even skincare is really unregulated. So you can have brands on the shelf that claim to be natural or claim to be organic and really aren't certified. So it's a big struggle to, uh, to uh, gain, you know, to enhance customer awareness. So I think customer awareness is the key, which in turn will uh, create demand. I mean, I, I started this out of a passion and I started this out of a necessity and a passion and if it wasn't for my particular you know passion to want to uh, produce a safe product for my children i don't think i would have that easily taken the extra step of going for organic and because we don't have organic uh, certifiers in the region so they all have to come from either europe or or the states um, so it, it's it's not that easy to be organic certified from logistically uh, speaking as well as it is, it's a difficult process. So, you know, when it took us a, a couple of years to prepare our factory and our, our, our you know, every, it involves everything. They come and they look at you with a magnifying glass. They look at everything, uh, your ingredients, the production process, the machines you use, not only the raw materials need to be organic, but the way you're producing your cream needs to be in line with organic philosophy. The packaging needs to be organic. Your, your waste management, everything needs to be organic. So it's not just simply branding it as organic or using uh, organic certified raw materials. So it's, uh, uh, which unfortunately uh, very few people know until you actually are in the business of manufacturing. So I think uh, us being the first might be a good thing because ho hopefully you only can go up from there in numbers, you know, and the more there are brands that go organic, the better it is for everybody, for the environment, for us, you know, more options means uh, uh, safer for everyone. Yeah, I see the, the a pertinent topic is certification, because as you said, a lot of people claim to be natural, but are not exactly natural, which is why we see a lot of distributors looking out of forests. Uh, sourcing from people who are properly certified from recognizable certified bodies. Yeah. So, and now let's move on to the current times. Uh, coming to the pandemic and the organic and national movement post pandemic, uh, Ms. Amina H, what are the what are what is the most important thing that has changed due to the current situation because of the pandemic? Yes, uh, I think that. Uh, the pandemic is a healthy, healthy problem, you know, and I think that people it will be uh, more and more uh, uh, interesting by the, the organic and the nat natural uh, products used for for clean or for use it every time, especially uh, cosmetic products. You see, and uh, there is like like um, some like conscience. Even me, uh, before uh, before by the I don't know uh, what is it natural and the surgery and uh, organic. I don't care about that. You see, but when I start the project, for example, I I I take I take a conscience about uh, the chemical ingredient that use it everywhere in supermarket because they are low cost and uh, you know the commercial every time they look for the for the gain money and uh, so, um, so 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 I think that many people is now. They have conscience about the to use natural uh, products uh, for eat, for uh, for food, for cosmetic, for every area. You see, uh, we see that uh, the, the number of users, like for example, there are statistics here. Here, I have statistic. I can share share you uh, these. Um, I can share you these uh, statistic that I have. It's uh, recently used. Uh, mm -hmm. You see my my screen. Yes. yes, of course. Yeah. Good. So uh, these are really they are st uh, statistics from uh, to use it by stat statistical research department uh, in Europe. So we ha we ha we we look here from 277 until uh, 217 the number of uh, of uh, the market of uh, to use natural ingredient to use natural uh, if you like uh, cosmetic uh, organic and natural cosmetic uh, products. You see. 
So, uh, so I think it will be uh, the post COVID. It will it will encourage people to take careful and uh, to uh, to take care for for their food, for their cosmetic, for their uh, all everything of their uh, life. Yes, it will it will surely rise, as the statistics suggest. It will surely rise. Well, that's our, we are here, we are here, and that's why, for example, uh, me, for example, I started the project in 20, uh, 2015. And uh, at the first time, when I when I when I, when we check the lists, the ingredient lists, and uh, really I was surprised about the, the, the I, I put blacklist, you see, to pro, to produce uh, the, the, the products. Voilà. <laughs> Uh, and uh, Lina, uh, from a Middle Eastern salon point of view, how has it been after everything opened up uh, for you and what has the demand been like and have more people come uh, to avail your treatments? So yeah, so obviously uh, beauty salons have been very affected. Uh, you know, obviously the footfall. Um, there is uh, still some hesitation of clients coming back. You know, there's still that overall fear. But no, it's definitely picking up. You know, people are uh, feeling a bit more confident. Uh, they're missing their treatments. They're missing, you know, just, just being pampered in general. So there definitely is, uh, you know, things are going back to normal in a way. Um, obviously, the, the, the spending has been um, affected uh, previously when it first broke out. So people were going more online, purchasing products versus, you know, they'll purchase them from, from a store. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I am seeing um, an improvement and, and things are going back to normal now. And has there been interest from new people? So people who maybe would not have chosen this lifestyle before? Yes, definitely. We are always getting new customers mm -hmm. who read about us. You know, they Google uh, organic Dubai salon and then we come up. So, so yeah, this interest is definitely not, uh, not decreasing. We're always getting new, new uh, clients, especially the ones, uh, especially pregnant women. And they, they're always calling us because they're pregnant and they want to start, you know, taking care of their uh, treatment choices. Yeah. So there's always and that is the something that is something I would expect because mothers are extra cautious, especially new mothers. So, sure, sure, and and you know you need to be uh, careful for you know uh, on on the products that you're putting on your skin because the skin it, it only takes twenty six seconds for the chemicals to be absorbed in in the skin. Okay, and Mukta, uh, any uh, de any demand for specific products, and has there been a shift from this to that? Self-care and um, skin care. I mean, um, it's been really interesting because I'm on the e-commerce space. So, you know, before COVID, especially within the region, you know, people are not so comfortable shopping online. And especially, you know, if it's um, people want to go into the stores, they want to test the products. So what happened with us is that during COVID, our, the demand for us be, um, grew a lot. So we saw a lot more online shopping occurring, which in effect, you know, um, we saw a lot more sales coming in. Um, skincare was big, of course, you know, because no one was really going out and buying cosmetics. So I saw an uptake definitely in skincare. And what was really interesting is that hair care as well. So usually, you know, you don't really hear a lot about hair care. Skincare is normal, but hair care people kind of just to the side or you know they go out and um, get it done professionally but because of COVID no one could go out no one could go to a salon everyone was just stuck at home so I saw a huge uptake when it came down to hair care and um, because I recently also launched um, Buklem which is um, a curl care vegan plant-based curl care brand that became huge especially within the curl care community the curly hair girls community as well and that's just been um, the demand for that has been crazy. So I've definitely seen a lot more, you know, awareness for self-care, people just spending a lot more time, you know, taking care of themselves. And that's really reflecting in, you know, the demand, especially for skincare, hair care, and even body care. That's a very interesting point because I can totally relate to that. Uh, Pre-COVID, I was quite lazy to take care of my skin uh, person. you know you have fast lives so you just 
go out as soon as possible for that. Now I'm very particular about my skincare. I've gone into a skincare sort of routine, so I I can see why people would go into self care. What can they have? Both tan on their hands, and they just maybe want to look good for themselves at home as well, naturally. <laughs> and and then on top of that, you know, although we're open now, you know, physical stores are open, but you can't have testers anymore. So it's kind of put online. retail and physical retail on the same level because even if you go to a physical store you can't try the products either so which has been good for us in a way because especially because we are in a region that's not very comfortable when it comes down to online shopping nice nice these are really really like amazing insights especially for online because we have seen even in our different segments our different organic segments that online has been be skyrocketing and how about the sourcing products uh, so uh, lena and mukta um, have there any been changes in the country that you source for so i know lena is mainly from online uh, sorry from local uh, has there any been any specific change or what is it that you're looking at now when you are sourcing products Uh so for me um once i find a brand that uh really works for us and is uh, liked by customers we're very loyal to this brand um and uh, obviously uh it depends on the supplier so if if they can keep stock um always available that makes it so much easier for us we have had cases that you know a product a specific product has not been um in stock for a very long time due to shipping uh, restrictions so yeah we we did go through that but uh but yes it is opening up now and mukta same with you do you live in any specific country or what is your process luckily for me um the brands that i work with so i i import brands as well and i also work with local distributors so with the local distributors it's been okay because um they've been fairly well stocked so i haven't had issues with them and in terms of um importing the brands in of course there was initial delays when it came down to air shipments because that definitely got pulled down but the brands that i work with were also well stocked so i kind of feel like you know if you are working with brands who are not organized not well stocked that could have been a potential problem and another thing i mean and when i first started miss Pal- miss palatable um so i do import brands and you know there is a process of registration within dubai you have to register every brand with dubai municipality it was a nightmare <laughs> 3 years ago but since then they've really got um, they brought it online a lot more and um you it's a lot more easier here and there you know you do still get some hic- technical hiccups because everything is online but it's it's a fairly straightforward process i mean the only issue really comes up is if the brands themselves don't have their documentations put in place if they don't have their documents put in place and that's already a worry sign for me um when it comes down to european brands i do find that they then it tends to be a lot more easier because they have to have their documents when when they are in europe like i said you know the restrictions are a lot more stricter every the issues really come down to american brands because american brands most of the time don't have documentation unless they're being sold in europe okay very interesting yeah and anna uh, from a producer's perspective a supplier's perspective what has the challenges been for logistics during the covid period you know frankly speaking we had not any uh, problems with the logistics because uh, within the europe they were free to ship any products to our customers so it was not any problems uh, for us maybe challenging was to launch an online store uh, So before the pandemic situation we would like to launch our online store and this situation pushed us the uh, pushed and motivated us to to adjust all the things and uh, uh, go online 
and we we do we did like this but uh, as i would like to say that um, in our uh, business i think online uh, online shopping uh, are still not enough in order to uh, to offset the declines of uh, the real uh, real shopping because it is very essential for body care for facial care product to smell to see the product to feel the product so it is for us online shopping is okay but anyway people are looking for um, for real touch for the product so it is challenging to it was challenging actually to provide our customers with real touch with the product because uh, the sales were only online but now it's okay more and more people for example they uh, go to the shopping mall or they go to the drugstore they smell the product they feel the product uh, they come back to their homes they're hesitating they're deciding they're comparing maybe with other producers and after that they goes online but the first step is to to feel the product uh, physically yeah. i guess also uh, we had a chat about this in another segment how important packaging is if you're selling online because that's basically the first visual connection you're going to have with the and also transparency you have to be transparent with all the products uh, listed so i do feel that if we are going to a, a an online age packaging especially for the beauty segment is important not sure if yeah you... but as for transport issues there were no any problems i should say yeah and your packaging is wonderful as well so <laughs> And uh, Miss Amina M, uh, do you have any uh, any other views from a producer's perspective? Any challenges that you faced for this period? Yeah, um, actually, the COVID uh, uh, issue has been quite interesting because, in some respects, it pushed uh, buyers that would traditionally only buy physically in a store to buy online because that was the only option out there. So, a lot of our customers that uh, would typically buy in your know, pharmacies or beauty uh, salons uh, had to buy online. So we saw an increase in that, which is good for us because we also like to relate to our customers online. We saw a big uh, rise in demand for one of our products, which, we, which we've had for a couple of years, but because of COVID became very popular, the natural hand sanitizer. So that flew off our stocks, which is good because I'm happy at least that, uh, uh, you know, when pe because people are now so concerned about sanitizing and cleaning. So they're not really looking at the products they're using because they want to keep themselves safe, which is the unfortunate part of it. So I was happy to be able to contribute in a safe, effective hand uh, spray. Uh, so at least, uh, so that's the positive aspect. But from the challenge aspect, it is the shipping. I mean, I live in Jordan and our factories in Jordan. Yes, we do use Jordanian products. Our main ingredient is organic olive oil, but I sourced from around the world packaging, uh, raw materials, and we've had, I won't say even severe, <laughs> excessively severe delays in shipping. And everybody, um, from, I mean, I don't know whether it's really physically uh, the case or is it people using COVID as an excuse. The prices have gone up, delays, uh, you know, air, air freight, if you want to air freight something, instead of it taking within a week it arrives, it takes two weeks and they say the planes aren't, you know, we have shortages in planes. We go to sea freight and sea freight takes forever. And uh, small things like, you know, logistics, you know, when you, I source from some European uh, companies, they have pieces of their chain missing now. So for example, some, I'm, I'm not sure if you're familiar, for example, some essential oils are considered dangerous goods. So they have to be packed in a certain way to travel. So some of the suppliers can no longer ship them to me or pack them for me because their middle people who usually do the packaging are non-existent anymore because they got wiped out with COVID. So it's a lot of small things that we're still feeling the repercussions. So it's been quite challenging. I mean, I've had, uh, but then on the other hand, I've had in the middle of COVID, four barrels of ethanol, organic ethanol arrive within three weeks. And it's ethanol that's supposedly the hottest, you know, item off the shelves in Europe. You know, so 
that arrives in two weeks, but everything else takes six months. So I just can't understand. You know, I think it's a combination of both. But for me, at the end result, it's extremely challenging. <laughs> yes, there are certainly uh, the challenges, but I guess we are tapering off a bit. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. We hope for the best. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for us as well, sorry, I mean, we are in the middle of opening our first retail store. So let's see what happens with COVID. We're having our flagship retail store. <laughs> so we're, we're trying to plan around no sampling and no trying and experiencing. And so it's a bit of a, it's going to be interesting. Let's put it that way. <laughs> um, now moving forward to uh, the fact that there are several suppliers that find the Middle East market as one of the top regions for beauty. So uh, starting off with Gupta, what advice do you have for international suppliers who want to enter the skincare and functional cosmetic sectors in this region? Um, I would say that um, you need to understand the market, especially um, the UAE, in my opinion, is a word of mouth market in the sense that, you know, if you, um, a lot of, um, for example, a lot of our customers, they come to us because of word of mouth. You know, someone has bought from us, they have liked what, we've, what we're what we selling, they like our concept and our website, and then they share it with their friends. And that's how, you know, that's how we've grown. It's, it's pretty, pretty much word of mouth. Um, social media is also very, very important, especially Instagram. It can get a lot very noisy, but, you know, if you're authentic, then, you know, people will notice that. Um, one of the other things I would say is that, um, especially now after COVID, people are um, a lot more price conscious. I think there's this strange perception that, you know, the Middle East is all about luxury, money, and, you know, let's hike the prices up and, you know, things, things like that. But the reality is that, you know, if you're, it's, you have to be affordable and you have to match your prices because it's it's easy for people in the UAE, especially to buy from outside, from the UK. You know, you've got huge websites um, in Europe and it's not that difficult to buy from them. But if you're matching the prices and the prices are about the same, it's then it just comes down to, you know, I'd rather buy from Dubai because I can get it tomorrow instead of waiting for a couple of days. But if your price points are really high, I mean, you're looking at like, you know, 20, 30 dif dirhams difference, then of course, you know, that's gonna be, that's gonna affect you, and, um, especially now after COVID. And the third thing is, um, you know, knowing that brands do have to get registered in Dubai. If anyone tells you that they, you don't need to register it, they're lying or they're not doing it the right way. Legally, you do have to register every single brand, every single SKU with Dubai municipality. And for that, you do need your documentation right. And that's something that we're very transparent about on at Miss Palatable. And we only, every single brand that we have listed is um, registered. And even with distributors locally, the first thing I always ask is, you know, can I see your certificates? Yeah, uh, definitely. We're going back to the certification and the trust factor, which is important in, uh, if you sell beauty products anywhere. And another point I wanted to bring up was uh, the relationship between the, the one who sources and the sourcer. I've seen in beauty, long-term relationships really tend to stick. So what is your opinion on that, Lena? Yeah, from a client perspective, I, I do have um, a wish list uh, for all suppliers to really uh, take into account. And that is to collaborate with local suppliers who can really uh, go the extra mile, especially when you have a client who's loyal, you know, to offer, you know, marketing support, uh, to give great incentives, uh, to give great offers, to offer uh, training to have a continuous uh, dialogue with, with the actual establishment, the business and, and the supplier, you know, like th they need to be our right hand. And unfortunately, in many cases, um, I have had to cut relationships because of that reason. You know, they, they continuously change uh, uh, staff and then their relationship is not as good. So you have to start from scratch and then it affects overall quality of, of how they are servicing the client. 
So yeah, this is something I really uh, look look um, at when when I pick supp suppliers. How are they? You know, um, uh, not so much the the, the 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 turnaround time of of supplying the product because that's great, but it's just the, the the support that additional support and the incentives that they uh, they have in place. For sure, the support that they have really affects your uh, business indirectly as well. So now we've reached towards our conclusion. Uh, quickly, uh, one or two line thoughts about uh, 2021 before we move on to audience questions. So uh, starting with Ms. Amina H, what is your prediction for 2021 for organic and natural products in the beauty segment? As, uh, for us in Bay Davis Cosmetics, we will continue to work in the in the different um, in the different uh, we will do uh, new products, especially you see. Uh, every time with the data, it's the the basic ingredient for uh, for the for the brand, and uh, for 2021. Um, for now. Uh, I think because I have many perspectives, but uh, for the for, for the short uh, for the short time, we will continue to in the in the other uh, to produce other products, especially. Okay, and Anna, how about you? What I would like to add is uh, the clients are always looking for news, so new products are always good. If we are talking about the trend, I, I think we will have the same trend for, trend for natural certified organic products. It will stay with it will stay without any changes. But as uh, but people are always looking for something new, so we will continue to produce new lines, new products, new active ingredients. Of course, all of them will be organic, natural, certified. So yeah, we will continue. This Wonderful. And Ms. Amina M? Uh, yeah, for us, uh, 2021, uh, we are also uh, continuing the growth of our range of products. So we're hopefully going to incorporate some organic certified shampoos and conditioners and deodorants, you know, just to complete our range. And uh, we're very hopeful that uh, the consumer will um, continue his, uh, their awareness of uh, the benefits of using organic products, even in a world of COVID obsession with germs and disinfectants and chemicals, which for me, for me personally, I feel is a very frightening trend because when you get so scared from something, you stop, you know, everything else gets put on hold. And this is my real wish for 2021 that we take it off, you know, just go back to consumer awareness, consumer, our consumer, you, we have the choice, and this is what I wish our consumers will uh, continue to do. <laughs> yes, power in the hands of the consumer. And uh, Mukta, how about you? Um, for me, I think we're just starting, especially in the UAE. You know, um, we're just in the beginning. It, this whole beauty segment space is really going to grow um, going forward to 2021. And in terms of what we're doing in Miss Palatable, we're constantly growing, we're changing, we're adapting. We're adding new brands on, we're sourcing new brands constantly. So, I mean, for us, our, our main goals is to just provide more options, increase conversation um, within Dubai, within UAE regarding this segment. And, you know, just showing um, and selling more brands and, you know, increasing our portfolio and curating more products. Yes, again, back to new products, back to new into innovation. Definitely seeing that happening in 2021. And Lena, your parting words. Yeah, for me, it's just continuing, you know, taking care of our clients and ensuring that, you know, they, they're, they're reassured and they're getting the same quality and service that they're used to. So, yeah, it's just continuing doing the same and spreading the awareness of, of the, you know, the, the toxic chemicals in products. Wonderful, wonderful. That was quite a profound, engaging and insightful discussion where we discussed so many things from certification to innovation. And I bet our audience is also very engaged because they have a lot of questions uh, for you guys. Um, the first question is uh, directed towards either Lena or Mukta. 
uh, what are the ingredients in demand in beauty products these days? So with skin, okay, I'll just step in with skin care. Skin care, skin care. It's uh, hyaluronic acid, uh, niacinamide, um, retinol. These are all of your, um, you know, conversation. Everybody's talking about these key ingredients right now. With retinol, you've got the natural version, version which is bakuchiol. So that's really popular. Um, one of the most searched terms on my website is hyaluronic acid. Like that's just constant. And, and sun care, SPF, you know, people are now actually looking for a mineral sun care instead of uh, chemicals. So zinc oxide is very big as well. So that's what I'm seeing um, in terms of um, skincare and hair care, um, no sulfate free, paraben free, you know, the, the usual and curl care. Curl care is becoming huge right now and in demand right now. Okay, hyaluronic acid, niacinamide. Even as a, as a as someone who took interest in skincare recently, these were all the things that popped up. So yeah, <laughs> and, and vitamin, C, vitamin C as well. Ah, uh, vitamin C, of course. <laughs> uh, this is a question for anyone. Uh, how far do you think a non-based makeup will grow? With the increase in demand for the organic and natural sector, because we know foundations and concealer already have a sort of a segment, a niche segment. But what about eyeshadows and lipsticks? I think it's going to grow. I mean, we're all wearing masks right now, so the concentration now in terms of makeup is eyes. I think you know we're not going to see a lot more lipsticks and lips if lipsticks are being sold they're going to be the ones you know that don't show up on the masks. So definitely eyes, eyeshadow, eyeliners, blush, you know it might go a bit higher now so that it can be seen under the masks. But and you know as long as we're all wearing masks it's that's what I think that's what we're going to see. Yeah, actually I have an interesting quote that um... The fact that women wear lipsticks, even though you're wearing masks, masks just proves that you're doing it for yourself and not for others. <laughs> There's a mask on top of it. And Alina, any thoughts about the ingredients or the cosmetics? So, I mean, there's always a, a highlighted ingredient every year. I mean, you know, we had like, um, I don't know, we had argan oil be all the craze for one one year and then and then it gets replaced by you know vitamin c so it, it yeah it, there's always a highlighted ingredient for me it's really um going back to to uh the basic ingredients uh there's a lot of misconception i get lots of clients saying oh does your product have chemicals everything has chemicals it's just we need to be specific you know you need to ask the right questions does it include harsh chemicals, the toxic chemicals that are really nasty? Because a lot of plant-based ingredients have natural chemicals. And even their, their um, Latin names sound like really dangerous, toxic chemicals, but they're actually safe. So yeah, so there is, they, people need to ease up. I think there's a lot of information um, out there uh, on, on the internet and people just need to be picky about what they need to focus on. So do ask about the, the the nasty chemicals the dangerous chemicals and don't don't worry too much about you know the rest so so ask the right questions yeah so for me it is always explaining the difference between what a chemical is there is the dangerous ones and there are not the dangerous chemicals perfect i have some free i have some questions uh, from the audience for me uh, so first is uh, how do i contact you uh, simple, just drop us an email at info at organicandnatural.com and we'll be right with you. Uh, next one is, how can I exhibit at the expo? Uh, to participate in the Organic and Natural Expo 2020, you can either log into our website at organicandnatural.com or you can click on the Get Involved button, which is below your chat box. How can I be a part of the Digital Trade Week? This is part of our free value-added service to our exhibitors. So all you need to do is sign up for the Organic Show in Dubai which is after four months for now in December, and contact our sales team who will be happy to help. Uh, next one is, where can I get the schedule of the Digital Trade Week? So it's on organicandnatural.com slash digital. We have sessions lined up for each segment until September, so stay tuned. And lastly is, can you explain more on what Arabian Organics that um, Ms. Anna mentioned is? 
Uh, Arabian Organics is the first e-commerce portal with complete fulfillment services, offering hassle-free market access for international suppliers. If you're a buyer, you can source high-quality global products locally at wholesale prices with quick delivery services. Arabian Organics offers various packages from product registration to clearing customs and warehousing delivery. We do have more questions, but unfortunately, we have run out of time today. But uh, don't worry, we will be live every two weeks until September for different segments. A big thank you to all of our panelists and our 3,000 attendees who are live with us now from all over the world. Uh, this only shows the interest and demand for organic and natural products and will further strengthen the online trade community. Stay tuned for our next Digital Trade Week segment and see all of you at the Organic and Natural Products Expo in December. Thank you very much and bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you so much. Have a good day.